Welcome to Wall Street Training's module on the overview of the financial markets. In this module, we will quickly go through the specific industry jargon and go through exactly what is the sell side, the buy side, what is exactly investment banking, asset management, sales and trading, as well as hedge funds and alternatives. A merchant bank, the traditional definition, the old school definition, is a bank that deals in international finance and makes loans and underwriting activities. Well, that's a mouthful, but what we really care about now is the mainstream definition. Specifically, a boutique investment bank that has access to capital for principal investments. Whether they get this from the partner's capital or they have an affiliated private equity fund or venture capital fund. A merchant bank, again, is a boutique investment bank, very specialized, typically in the middle market, who also has access, typically through another fund or another affiliate vehicle, in which they can make actual principal investments. So now you can get the best of both worlds. Why is that? You can cherry pick the best deals from your deal flow, and then decide to invest using your own capital and to try to make additional value-added, quote-unquote, value-added proprietary gains. So that is where a merchant bank, if they have access to capital and they do it right and know the industry very well, they can also make a fair amount of money as well. The investment banking hierarchy usually starts at the very bottom. This is your analyst at the very bottom who does all the grunt work, works on pitch books and memorandums, comps and financial modeling, and does a lot of industry research, a lot of internet as well. They are literally sitting in front of Excel at 4 o'clock in the morning. Now, the associates who oversee the analysts have a lot more responsibility. So they're the ones who can have to take responsibility if something goes wrong. Because the analysts can always push blame up to the associate and say, ah, I was told to do this. They ultimately, the associates are supposed to check the analysts as well as start thinking about additional things, past the grunt work, and start thinking strategically. So again, the associate oversees the analyst, will do some of the financial modeling and analysis, as well as start to interact with the client and execute their transactions. The vice president, typically considered middle management here, will actually focus more on transaction execution as well as the strategy of the deal and what needs to be done to get the deal done. The product development as well, they will think of ideas as well as start actively managing the client. And their ultimate job is to make sure the associate and the analyst are doing the work properly. This vice president is supposed to have a fair amount of deal experience who can then go ahead and decide and figure out, hey, are we doing something wrong? Are we not doing something wrong? Do we need to think about this from a different angle? Presumably, they've seen a lot of deals in the past before. Moving up the hierarchy, you have uh, the principal, senior vice president, or the director. Depending on, well, you might even say executive director sometimes. Depending on the specific bank and what their hierarchy and their title is, this is a step above vice president below the managing director. The principal, senior vice president, or director is responsible now for industry coverage as well as developing products alongside the vice president as well as starting to develop relationship management and to start sourcing deals on their own. Then you have the ultimate at the top, the managing director. The managing director is responsible primarily for client coverage, what I call a highly paid salesman. They have a lot of relationships in the business in the field and in the industry that they are able to rely upon. The managing director is not necessarily supposed to be a finance guru. That's where the principal, VP, associate, and analyst come into play. These guys down here primarily do transaction execution. Whereas the managing director on top is primarily responsible for getting the deal. It doesn't matter if you have the best and the brightest investment bankers, you must get the deal. However, that also means that they do a fair amount of travel, smoothing and and whining and dining with the clients. And you might also have the head of the group who oversees the entire group, whether it's an industry or product, and they typically report to the head of investment banking. They're more of an executive that then oversees and is responsible for the entire P&L, profit and loss, of that particular division. And in a nutshell, that is what the investment banking hierarchy is. Traditionally and typically, the analysts will have a two to three year rotation, or two to three years as an analyst, usually hired straight out of an undergraduate college. The associate would either be considered an analyst promote who is asked to come back as a third year analyst and then eventually to a first year associate if they make it there, as well as straight out of business school with an MBA. The vice president typically is an associate who has been promoted because they, again, are the core in terms of deal uh, execution of the deals. Now, the principal and the senior vice president typically might be a vice president that has been promoted or it might be somebody who came in from the industry with not that many years of client experience, but ultimately, again, the managing director is responsible for bringing in the clients. So from that perspective there, two to three years as an analyst, 
go back to business school, come back after business school as a first year associate. You might do that for anywhere between three to five years, and then you might decide to continue staying within the investment banking hierarchy or not. Progressively, as you move up the ranks, your hours, of course, also get a lot better. 